Coding Challenge Review, 24th of January, Intermediate. Right, let's have a look to the first question. Actually, yeah, let's refresh and then, okay, one minute, one minute before the start of the session, no problem at all. We can actually have a look to the question and then we'll try to solve it. Multiply. How many times have we solved that question, guys? Like 20 already, right? So we have a function that receives how many arguments? Two. Two, correct. What type of the arguments? Functions, Functions correct. What, what do we need to do? Multiply the result of invoking both functions. Right? All good, right? Cool. So, yeah, let's see if we can start. Here we go. We are ready to go. Let's go. Question number one, multiply. You're right, we, we need two questions. So I'm going to put question number one, function one, question number two, function two. So generally speaking, we just need to return, return the result of invoking both functions. But I believe this is not going to be that easy because the last one only has one argument. So we need to control that. There are several ways to do that, right? We know that already. Tell me one of them. If else. If else. Nice one, Ashley. So we can do if what? Function Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then else? Else what? F1, like that, right? Yeah. Correct. Will this work? Yes. Any elegance issue? No, that's an oh, if no, else. No, you don't need it. No, 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 no. Right. So that's what work, right? Easy peasy. Yes, no elegance issues. So good so far. Give me another way to solve it, guys. Ternary operator. How do we do that with ternary operator? Function, uh, FN2. FN2. Uh, question. question. FN1 by FN2 else. Fn1. Will this work? Yes. yes. Oh, Thank you. Who said that? Was it Bala? Mo. Who? Mr. Mo. Mo. Mo is on the phone. How Mo knows that I, I didn't put a return statement? <laughs> yes. So Mo is right. Regardless of how he managed to find the answer, <laughs> Mo is right. We need to add a return statement, right? With our return statement, what a function without return statement actually returns? Undefined, correct, correct, All right? So that it works again. Cool, so then do you know any other way to solve that question? Yes, arrow function where? You mean a default value? Yes, default. Correct. Yes. So Rafa is right. We can do function two equals equals what? Parentheses. Correct. Right. So now we can simply return f1 by f2. Right. Easy. Right. Does it work? No. What's wrong? Fn1. Right. Correct. Now it works. There, is, there are more ways to solve that. Don't get me wrong. We can do, for example, multiply f, fn1 by fn2, then fn2 or 1. You see that? Yeah. It's, a, it's a very sternly operator, but a bit different because we are just invoking fn1 once. Can you repeat that in English? Hey, what? Yeah. So, saying, yeah, so you say multiply the result of invoking Fn1 by, by what? We'll see. Do I have function 2? If I have function 2, multiply function 1 by function 2. Else, multiply function 1 by 1. So in other words, just invoke function 1. Yeah? Cool. Any question, guys? Yeah. That's effectively what it's doing, right? It's typing, it's typecasting the function. 
what is typecasting? Well, but that, but yeah, but that's that, that's not because of double or triple equals. That's because if there is any function true, that's truthy. If you don't provide any function true, that's undefined. Undefined is falsy. Actually, we don't need that, right? That's redundant. I use the rest operator and the reduce. You use, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's what we, we saw that on Monday. I'll have a look to your solutions in a minute, Bala. Don't worry about that. All right, so, yeah, that, that's fine, all good. So, let me have a look to what you did, guys. Multiply, Megan, ternary operator. Let me zoom that a bit for readability purposes. Right, let's have a look again. Eventually, here you go. So Megan, ternary operator, fine. Rafa, default value, very elegant, nice. Acel didn't work. Uh, Daniel, default value. Poppy, ternary operator, Natasha, if else, Ashley, if else, what, what, N2, N1, Ashley. To me, it goes a bit against readability, right? Because if I read FN, okay, that still stands for function, right? FNA, FN1, FUNC1, you know, I, I accept all these things, but N, I don't get, it feels like a number, number one, number two, right? Semantics, guys. And then Bala, this is a classic, right? In Bala's world, he used to do the same thing, which is very elegant. I like that. I really like that. So he used the REST operator to gather all the arguments, and then he just, you know, multiplied them all sequentially, right? Setting the default value to one. So he doesn't care if we have one function, two functions, or three functions. So his solution will be more, uh, you know, precise or scalable because if we add another function, it will work, right? Right. I mean, everyone pretty much found a way. Look at the Itamar. This is what we literally just saw, right? If in one, and if I have F in two multiplied, if not, return one. Uh, Dave, mm, I, oh, I struggle a bit to read what Dave did. First of all, well, the parentheses, even though they are optional, fine. I, I buy that argument, but then I don't really buy that one. So if you, that's okay. You put if statement here, but then the else means that that bit should be moved, should be moved to one line below, right? That will help readability. Uh, not sure if anyone else uses a ternary operator. It, interestingly, well, yeah, but Megan's using in a single line, right? So it's, it's okay to leave it in one line. It's okay to leave it in multiple lines. Right? For example, reach. You see? This is, what I, this is what I mean. So reach approach, I think, is very elegant. If I have function to multiply, if else. It's very read to identify what the if and the else are, right? And then more default value and jaf if else. All good, right? I mean... That was an easy one. That was probably the most complicated one. Get top character. Uh, so we have a list of characters and we want to obtain the top one. How do we know the top one? Because we have a list of scores. So based on the average, we need to determine which one has the highest average. I find a bit surprising that you all have so many problems with that question, considering we review it on Monday, if I'm correct. I think we reviewed that on Monday, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Right, please watch the videos, guys. Right, so, because I know that I, at some point I need to calculate the average, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an, a get average function, right? Get average. So okay, my get average function will receive a list of Numbers. I don't care if it's a scores, age, uh, whatever, right? Yes, numbers, salaries, yes, numbers, numbers. And then with numbers, we can easily calculate the average, right? Numbers dot reduce, first argument, which is the accumulator. I'll call it average, the second one. How we call the second argument, guys? Number. Number, thank you, nice one. Number, and then return what? Average plus number. Will this work? Uh, and zero. Correct. ASL is right. If we do that, 
remember to add zero. We, that was the former board challenge, right? Cool, so because we already got to get average, let's go back to the main function, get top character, argument name. Numbers, Numbers wrong. Characters. Characters. Characters, nice, well done guys, characters. So then the very first thing I would like to do is I would like to, to get a new array. I have an array, right? I would like to get a new array replacing a scores with score or average score or something like that. Which method on the array in JavaScript transforms one array into another one? Map. Map. Correct. Correct. Nice one. So we can do return characters.map. Argument name? Character, right? It's good that you already mastered all these things, right? So then here, I would like to return. So character is an object, right? So the first character is that one. I would like to replace that one with a new type of object. I will respect the name because eventually I will, I will need the name, right, to display which is the top one. But I don't, I don't want to keep the list of scores. I want to keep the average score. So return what? An object, right? How do I get the name? Yeah, Ooh. yeah, the name. name, and then score. Score, and we need to make the, the get average. Correct. And, and what, what do we pass here? Number. Number? Oh, no. Correct. Correct. Correct or scores in plural, right? Semicolon here? Yes. yes, nice one. Right. So, because we're going to use map, I would like to change that to chain the list of actions. After mapping, essentially, I will have another array of how many elements? Three elements. Three elements, correct. And because I have another array of three elements, I would like to get, to extract the element with the highest score. How do we know which element has the highest score? How can we? Short, short. correct, correct, correct. Let's use short. So with sort, dot sort, correct. And we'll put, um, what do we put here? Char A, char B. Okay, A one, whatever, right? Correct. And then return. Yeah. Return what? Score character. Character A score. Character A dot score minus. Character B dot score. A minus B or B minus A? B minus A. Why B minus A? Ascending order. Correct. We want to this we want to get the sending order. I mean technically speaking, we could we could do it that way. We'll see in a minute how, right? But just to keep it easy, let's display the top one first, right? So so good so far. After shorting the array, I still have an array of three elements, but I know that the first one is the top character. So how do we display, how do we access the first character of the array? Uh, zero. Zero. Like that? No. 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 Square bracket zero. But, but we don't want the entire object, right? We don't, we don't care about the score. We just want the name. Dot name. I remember the first week you struggled a lot with this kind of syntax, right? So that's good, that's good. That should work unless you spot an issue. Is there any elegance problem, anything like that? Line H, what happened in line H? No, no, we don't need a semicolon because we are not done. We are chaining first map and then short, right? Cool, so we try. Oh, what's that guys? No one noticed the issue. There is one point on the board challenge. Five. 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 Can't close inside the object. Say it again, Bala, or more. You well, can't close the, um, you can't do semicolon within the object. That's correct. That's it. Is that more? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, correct. That's wrong, guys. You see, we cannot put a semicolon inside of an object. We can put a comma, yeah, yeah. right? Question of topic, and now is where I feel very old. Can you put a comma at the end? 
That's a, that's a, a trailing coma, right? Hmm. Yes or no? Okay, let's see what happened. Let's run that. Oh, it works, and the elegance console doesn't complain. So today, with modern JavaScript, trailing commands are accepted. In the past, they were forbidden. To be more precise, if you get that question in a job interview and you want to surprise the interviewer, the only browser that has been supporting trailing commas since the first day was Internet Explorer, when they were not even part of the standard. They were supporting trailing commas, but they were not uh, part of the standard. But now they are. Now they are. And do you know why, even though that looks a bit ugly, there's a really good reason. I really like I don't, I don't use to put trailing commas, to be honest, but I think there's a good reason to have trailing commas. I'll show you an example. I'll show you the problem. If because of whatever reason, I want to change the order of the properties because of, you know, I, I want just to move that line somewhere else. So what happens if I try to move that line? I cut it and I put it there. Look, I massively broke the object, right? So if I, just by moving one line, that's the end of the world, right? However, if you put a trailing comma, I can safely move that line above, right? And the code still works. You see? So for refactoring purposes, the trailing comma is sexy. Say it again. Properties. Why? No, well, no, that's a good point. So, M Megan, Megan, that's, that's a really good point. In, as, as we learned yesterday, talking about iterable, enumerable, uh, enumerable, all these things, we, we talk about objects, the order doesn't matter. So, it doesn't matter. So, but first of all, readability. Maybe if I have first name and last name, if I put the last name first, from a human point of view, I prefer to have the first name on top. And also, what happens if I have another object somewhere else and I want to move this property to the other object, right? Sometimes you need to, to, to move properties around, right? Cool, that works fine. So let's have a look to your proposals. So we got, what do we got here, guys? Uh, we got Megan, ooh. So Megan first, C, ooh. Right, so that's smelly, right? If in the middle of the code I see Megan or anyone else dividing something by free, what I mean, why by free? Right? Right, so because we have an array, character.scores, it's much better to put here character.scores.length. Because what happens if one character has five scores instead of three, right? Also, Megan got a big penalty on the length of that line, right? Apart from that, she's creating a list of averages, she's calculating the maximum, and then she's looping again to check where the maximum is, right? So that's a valid approach. It's to me over complicated. She needed one loop, two loops, three loops to obtain the maximum, right? That's a bit unnecessary, but it's still correct. Right. ASL, that's interesting. ASL literally copied what I did on Monday in a, is it again? There were some mistakes. Well, did, right, did ASL got any penalty here? Because on the short, it should be in the next line. On the short, mm, why? No. I think the short is correct, right? She no. put she put the parentheses, which is a good thing. Also, ah, okay, you mean yeah, that dot, I see. Fair enough, fair enough, yeah, yeah. I mean, in reality, to me, visually speaking, I will move that dot here, so then we do dot map and then dot sort, right? That, that's a bit, but I don't think she got any penalty. No. I, I agree with Rafa, I will do it the other way around, but this is not a reason to get a penalty. However, I can spot at least one line where she ma clearly got a big penalty. Unnecessary penalty, actually. Where? There is another point on the challenge. Right at the bottom, she missed semicolon. 
At the bottom, you miss. Where does he miss semicolon? For the return. Uh, no, no, that's correct because she's doing an inline return. That's fine. See the line number. One below, no, one below we close the number. No, there are no line numbers here, but no, no, there are no missing, as far as I can see, there are no missing semicolons because we are just closing the function. But there is something wrong. It's more, it's relatively obvious actually. The function needs to be outside. Right. So I wasn't even thinking about that, but that's a good point, right? So the function is inside, which is technically speaking valid, but that's a bit weird, right? So she's nesting get average score inside of get top character. But again, that's valid. There is a subtle issue, however. The character B is no. 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 Um, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. And now you don't get one point, you get half a point. <laughs> because you were unable to find it the first opportunity. It's about indentation. Function being nested, it should be all the way to the left. Yeah, well, no, but this is because it's a nested function. So, considering it's a bit weird nesting the function, if we accept that, that's correctly indented. It's not here. Where, Poppy? The candy grapes below main character name score get average score, but they can't get grapes. Is that just over? That's correct. Poppy got half a point. What happened with that? Look, I can clearly see it's wrong. Look at that. I can see this is a tab, but now, ah, oh, two spaces. Ace, Ace L. You got a very obvious penalty that you ignored here, right? Cool. It should be tab. We shouldn't put the spaces, we should put tabs. Apart from that, really good. Then, well, because it's obvious, because the tab has four spaces, I can clearly see that this is floating, it's not aligned here, you see? It's on the left, it's in the middle. One space and another space, right? If it's a tab, look at the effect. It's one, you see? Tab, 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 tab. Right? Cool. Uh, then Daniel, he did pretty much the same thing with correct indentation this time. Uh, yeah, I cannot spot anything wrong. Very solid. What else? We've got Natasha, average score, first time. You see, I, I really like the way Natasha creates from a semantics point of view. So she calculated the total, and then after the total, she, she, the average is total divided by the length, right? All good. Uh, however, wow, that's a bit confusing. Look at, woof. Look at the condition here, right? So it's checking if they get average of the character. Ooh. Ah, right, that's interesting actually. So she's using reduce, so she's looping on the array. That's a very interesting approach. Technically speaking, I like that. It's looping on the array using reduce and it's checking if each character is the top one or not, right? That's interesting actually. My only concern is that condition is very hard to read yeah, yeah, yeah. because this is wrongly indented, right? That should be put on the right hand side, or if it's too long, maybe with parentheses, but definitely not like that, right? Cool. What else? More. Same thing, right? First, new object, then short, and then, yeah, that thing. Itamar, the same thing. Jonan. Jonan. So he's finding. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, too many things here. Too many things here. Which is fine, right? He's, he's yeah, sorry, I got, I got a bit confused, but we got somewhere in the end. No, but, but that's, I like that. So even though, uh, yeah, he got a bit confused, he managed to find a way to solve the problem, right? So that's, that's perfectly fine. And then Jaff, using a classic for loop. Uh, and then I believe, I may be wrong, that Jeff got a penalty here because of the length of the function. It's a huge function, right? So generally speaking, we shouldn't create 
such long functions. What we could do is we, can, we could move part of the logic to a new function. I remember Jeff used to do that at the beginning of the bootcamp, right? With fine filter and all these things, right? So we could do the same thing here. And uh, that's it. So question, yeah, sorry. Any question? So I was debugging in a different console and didn't manage to finish it. I've pasted it in the in Slack, my, my solution if you uh, can review it, that'd be great. So, so do, you want me to, do you want me to review your solution? Yeah, it, it's in Slack. Uh, for this one. Yeah, but what? But yeah, but, but this is not finished, right? Oh, uh, not here. Ah, uh, here, oh, you're going to send it to me? And I think it's in Slack already. I sent it like, okay, yeah, I'll have a look afterwards. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, cheers, Vala. Cool, question number three. Question number three, merge arrays. That was super easy, right? That was super easy. Tell me, you tell me, how do we do that? Uh, function arguments, first of all. Two, two arrays. So arrays is, do we care if it's array of numbers, strings or something? No. Array one, array two, right? And then what, return what? Square bracket, dot, 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 array one, comma, dot, 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 array two. Anything else? No? Will this work? Nice. This is the, ba the sexiest way to join or concatenate two arrays. Here, uh, is this gather or spread? Spread, that's correct. We have an array, we spread it into a comma separated list of arguments, same here, right? And essentially at the end, we, we capture all these spread values with the main square brackets. So is there any other way to join two arrays? Concat, correct. Let's do concat. Can we do array one dot concat? Concat. Array two, that should work as well, right? Is this a pure or an impure function? Pure, pure correct, because concat is not modifying any of the arrays, right? However, if you read instructions, please use the rest parameter. Is it my feeling? Have we got the same questions on Monday? Same. Were the questions the same? Because yeah, yeah. literally all the questions were the same. No, 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 no. Not all. No, no. I to, it's supposed to be a random algorithm, but it's a bit smelly. Some questions get <laughs> offered, but you, you, you didn't do any, any regex yet, right? No. Maybe no. mm. yeah. that Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, anyways, I'll check the algorithm to see. <laughs> right. right. Megan, concat, wrong. You didn't read the instructions, right? So what, what the message you sent here is you are really good technically speaking, but you don't read all the instructions of the things, right? Which is a bad message. Rafa, correct. Aisel, correct. Daniel, correct. Bala, correct. Itamar, correct. Array, the semantics have improved a lot, right? You don't create a variable called Donald Trump or things like that. Well, you never did that, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, all good. I mean, that was easy one. Any questions? Question number three? No. no? Cool. Question number four. Will we finish the intermediate training by the first time with some time left, right? We've got 37 minutes. This one, I think, is the same also. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. No problem at all. Let's do that again, right? So, a gate average a score. How many arguments? Two. 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 Well, that's not correct, technically speaking. No. Here, how many arguments do you see in the first, uh, first example? Whoa, um, what I am? One, two, three, five. Five. five, that's correct. And on the second? Three. And on the third? Two. Correct. So we don't know how many arguments first do we have. Parameter. Correct. Let's use those parameters. So first of all, the first argument. Name. Name. And the second? Triple dot four. Scores. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. So we simply need to get the message. We need the average score, right? So let's create a function, get, uh, not get average a score because I think that function name is 
is horrible, right? Uh, that should be something like display user average score, right? So I'm going to call it this get average, correct? Get average. We receive a list of scores, return scores that reduce average score. I mean, we've done that I don't know how many times already, right? And then return average plus score divided by scores dot length, right? All these things that you already know. So then what? Then we need to display a message. The message is return the average score for is wrong. Why wrong, Daniel? Correct, that's correct. Remember, if you want to use uh, variables in that following the template literal syntax, you need to create, use backticks instead, right? So I'm going to get a variable called average equals get average, passing the scores, and then the average score is average. Will this work? No. no. Why not, Daniel? Math.round. Correct. That's correct, guys. Math.round. This is a typical thing which is not obvious. And it's very easy to fail here, to be honest, because... Well, unless... It's, it's not explained here. So, it's any reference to round. Yeah. I didn't get that, Asel. Yeah? Uh, is average. Is average. Uh, On the top. Yeah. Uh, another one. Return. Yeah. yeah. Return the average score for name is. So that's not get average, right? That's simply average. That's correct. All right. Will this work? Yes. Yes. Let's try. It does work. No elegance issues, right? Oh, I went back in the browser. Right, so yeah, that should work fine. Um, just one question. Yep. Reduce. Yep. Uh, the zero in the end. Uh, yep. If you don't put it, yep. which is going to be the default number? I remember you said. Ah, we did a board challenge. Uh -huh. Check the video. We, we recorded that. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you the answer. Okay. It will be something. Okay. Something which is not zero, definitely. Watch the video, and if after watching the workshop you still have issues, let me know. Cool. Right, so let's just check what you did here. Get average. Uh, Megan again, she, she didn't capture, I think she did the same thing on Monday. So that's a bit complicated, Megan, because you get a single argument, so then you need to splice the first one. You see, you see how complicated it is just to, you know, strip the name, right? It will be much easier to just put name, comma, values, right? Uh, like, for example, Rafa did. So, Rafa... Uh, let me have a look. Rafa, who probably got some elegance issues because of the length of the line. Yeah. Total, then the average, and then, you see, easy. A cell, she created the get average function, the same as I did. Fine. Daniel, same thing. Poppy. Yeah, I'm going to change the way I do it to the way you just explained because that way it can be, it got me muddled. Yeah. Um, and I ended up, say, being stuck ages because instead of total, I wrote sum. So yeah, that's what was happening with the mm. average and points and I then lost the most points. Yep. So I'm going to change my method of doing it. Yep. No, that's fine. Do you think Poppy got any penalty here? Here? Yeah, that's a bit weird because she declares a variable outside yeah. and then she's incrementing the value. So she's using reduce, but in theory, every time you use reduce is because you want to return something. She's returning something, but she's not capturing the result here, right? So that's a bit, you know. Yep. So that's why I'm okay, no, that's fine. You, you got a good excuse for that, but you don't. I don't, you I don't, did, don't like you the way I do it. I'm going to definitely change yeah. it. 
right? Probably here you got some penalty space. The space should go on the right, right? Cool. What else? Natasha, get average. Yeah, all good. Ashley. So same thing again. I'm not a big fan of spaces. If you think you need a space, it's a good time to do like Natasha did. Create a new function and do your logic here, right? Spaces don't necessarily help readability under my point of view. And then Bala. Oof. Uh, right, the indentation is a bit strange on line number four, right? This is right. So because so method round scores, so it's calculating the total, which is correct, and then dividing the result by the scores of length. So that's I think that's wrongly indented, and he probably got a penalty in that in that respect. And then. Itamar, remember, well, Itamar is not here at the moment, but in my opinion, whenever you do that, what should you put on the right-hand side? No, well, I mean, you can put curly brackets if you put an explicit return statement, but if not, parenthesis. parenthesis, thank you, that's correct. Put parenthesis here, right? That will help readability a bit. Right, and then more, he use reduce, well, it's pretty much the same thing. Jaff, hmm, what do you think of that, guys? That's, that's, no, listen, so that's correct. He's technically speaking right. From a human point of view, I'll be tempted to get the average. Well, no, listen, that's the average, right? So by definition, the average is, is round, correct? round is closer to the average than floor. It works fine in that particular case because of this particular set of numbers, but if we change the numbers a bit, it won't work, right? Cool, and then Richard, average, and Jonan. Uh, something interesting, subtle thing about Jonan is that he's using Pascal case to declare the variable. You see, it even it changed color. JavaScript thinks it's a React component or something like that, right? So we should have tried to avoid capitalizing the variables in JavaScript. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, all good apart from that, guys. And then finally, question number five. Hmm. Was it uh, Monday or not? No. no, okay, well, at least we got a new question. Yeah. Why did you say that was more complex if the questions were literally the same? That was way easier then, right? <laughs> if you watch this video again, right, you'll know how to do most of the things, I believe. Right, so remove characters. That's an interesting one. That's a typical question that there is a very easy way to do that, but if you don't clearly identify that, you may struggle a bit. So the way to solve that, or I'm going to propose you my way. So we have, first of all, how many arguments? Two. Two, the first one. Uh, String. I go, I go into string just yes, because it's on the description. So description is just speaking written by business. I'm trying to make business happy by speaking the same language or the same semantics, right? String. And the second one, going to some strip. Uh, remove. I'm going to call it blacklist. But anyway, I'm not very opinionated here. We'll see what you propose in a minute. So what I'm going to do is... Yeah, exactly. I, I don't really know what I, I don't have any plan, I'll be honest. But because I don't have any plan, I'll, I'll drive the problem to where I feel very comfortable, which is a race. So first of all, I'll transform the string into an array of individual characters, right? And then I would like to use filter probably, right? Because I want just to filter, right? So I want out, oh, wait a minute. Out, out of that string, I would like to get the same string, but discarding the elements on the second argument, right? That's why I would like to use filter. What's the argument name on the filter? Letter, character, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So then, What's the criteria to keep or to discard the given character or the given letter? 
it shouldn't be part of that array of the second argument. How do we know if an array contains a element, an element or not? Includes. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. So we can do black list dot includes character. Correct. What happened? Do we need to do anything else here? Yes. Why? What? Exclamation, Exclamation mark. mark. You're all right. We need to negate. We want to keep the character if it's not included. Correct? Will this work? Correct. We need to join, right? That's a classic intermediate issue. Classic. String, split, do something crazy in the middle, and finally join. The classic structure of an intermediate question, right? Anything else? Right? All good, no issues. Just FYI, so a bit about uh, JavaScript history, includes, which is pretty fundamental, is a new thing in JavaScript. So historically speaking, the way to solve that was using index of, which you may have heard about. Index of gives you the index. You remember the enumerable thing we learned yesterday, the index of that character. So if it's on the first position, index will be zero. If it's on the second position, index will be? And what if that element is not part of the array? What's the index? Minus one, that's correct, that's correct. So we could do that with classic JavaScript, which is ugly, right? But it works. So that's the way we used to solve it. But then someone realized that sometimes you don't care if index is one, two, seven. You just care is there or not. That's why now we can use includes. That returns a Boolean, which is slightly more elegant. Also, FYI, we can use includes with arrays and with strings. In other words, we can. Let me open a snippet. Uh, so we can, we can what? I'll show you in a second. So we can do, you tell me if I do A comma V. No, I'll give you a hint because eventually probably you've, you've done that. So I want to see if a character is a consonant or a vowel. So we can do that, right? A, E, I. O, U, dot, includes, what will that return? False, correct. What will this return? E, true. What will that return? Capital E. False, correct. So we, we got that, right? But also, we can even simplify that even further. That's the same thing. Includes also works with the strings. So what will this return? True, True correct. True. And what will that return? False. 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 Correct. Right? FYI, the way the... Uh, the way this works, right? Includes works. Right, so that was pretty much it. So 17 minutes left. Can't believe that. How many? 17 minutes. Oh. Wow. So what you did? Interestingly, yeah, it's, it was pretty obvious. It was the first time you had that problem because some of you didn't manage to get the answer. So Daniel. Daniel, literally the same thing, but a small concern about, you see, split. Move that to a new line. Because the code becomes way more elegant, guys. See, split, filter, join. You can see all the all the actions, right? If you put it on the right hand side, it's a bit harder to read. Same thing for Acel. And Bala, that's interesting. No, that's interesting, right? So he did something radically different, but yeah, still valid, of course. Why not, right? Uh, but even though that's still, you can argue, right? I mean, I, my only concern here will be 
if you are working with a senior team, that's fine because they will understand that. But if you are working with less experienced guys, they may struggle to understand what you are doing, right? But okay, we can have a, a good discussion about that. But what? Uh, I agree. Uh, your solution is much more simpler and elegant. Yeah. Yeah. But apart from that, Bala, something yeah. that I don't really like. That's the only thing I, I, I'm seriously complaining is the quotes. Look, you are mixing single quotes and double, right? We should yeah, keep it yeah, yeah. whatever you prefer, right? Cool. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Ashley, the same thing. Remember, guys, a split. Move them to a new line. Oh. Right. And then Natasha, very elegant. Very, very elegant. Really well done. Mo, the same thing. Really good. And then Itamar, the same thing. So, anyone else at the bottom? Not really. Cool. So. I think that was it for today, guys. So, is there... Oh, wait a minute, it doesn't work. What did it... <laughs> what, what happened here? It's missing the... Uh, wait, wait. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, because we changed it. Yeah, yeah I thought that we fixed it. Okay. <laughs> Such a miserable way to finish this session, right? So, any... <laughs> Anything else, guys? Any question? No? Cool. Thank you very much. See you next time.